All right, folks, Samori Benjamin here with a great guest, Greg Kelser, former Michigan State ball player. And of course, 1979, we all know about the historic championship game played between Indiana State and Michigan State and Magic Johnson beating Larry Bird in that game. Well, right here was Magic Johnson's running mate and he had a great game and a great season, a great career. Now he is the Detroit Pistons play-by-play -play color commentator and he walked he joins us here at the garden before the Nick Pistons game Greg thank you so much all right nice to join you okay so played at Michigan State also played for the Pistons mm -hmm. raised in the state of Michigan so how did you get into basketball growing up in the 60s and the 70s at that time well my dad was in the Air Force so I grew up in the Air Force he was a basketball player in the uh, in the service so I he was my first favorite basketball player and then of course started watching it on TV and Got a chance to see the likes of Bill Russell and Chamberlain go at it. The Knicks were some of my favorite teams growing up. And uh, I knew that's what I wanted to do. And I was very fortunate um, to, to get good coaching, uh, good mentorship. And uh, my parents made a deal with me. They said, as long as you get good grades, you can play any sport you want. Mm -hmm. So that was my motivation to do well in the classroom so I could play. That's awesome. Now, did you play any other sport? I played baseball and football. OK. But as I started to grow, uh, it was clear that basketball was going to be my best chance to be a professional athlete, which is what I wanted. Now, just growing up there and at that time, NBA kind of in its infancy and college basketball was bigger at one point than NBA. Just growing up, were you more into the NBA game or the college game? Well, for me personally, I, was, I, I loved both. I watched both with great interest, but I was into wherever I was at that time. When I was a high school student, I was into the high school game. When I became a collegiate athlete, my focus was on, on being the best collegiate uh, basketball player I could be. But I always had my eye on the pros because that's where I wanted to ultimately go. Um, so being in Detroit, I had access to a lot of professional athletes because a lot of guys that played in the NBA were from Detroit and they would play in the summertime. So I got a chance to really test my skills at a young age against these pros and found that at some point I was kind of hanging in there with them, learning a lot obviously, but it helped build my confidence that I could play NBA ball someday if I continued to work hard. Who are some of the pros who you remember playing against at a young age? I played against Dave Bing. Okay. I played against Don Adams. Mm -hmm. I played against Willie Norwood. These were all guys that played with the Pistons. Mm -hmm. I played against Dan Roundfield, who was a great player from the city of Detroit. I played against George Gerben, Campy Russell. All these guys, Campy's a former Nick. All these guys that would congregate at a gym called St. Cecilia okay. in Detroit. It was like the Mecca. And uh, you go there to sort of learn your lessons, get your baptism, grow, develop, gain confidence. and. We always say if you could make it out of St. Cecilia, you got a chance because there's a really tough basketball played there. Awesome. Okay, so now for college, you end up going to Michigan State and Judd Heathcote, but I read that Judd Heathcote wasn't the coach who was first there when you got there. Yeah. Another coach brought you in, but how did you end up at Michigan State? Uh, Michigan State started recruiting me my senior year in high school in Detroit, and their head coach at the time was a gentleman named Gus Kanakis and his assistant, Vernon Payne. The two of them recruited me. And my family and I were so impressed with those two gentlemen, I realized that that's, those are the people I want to play for. Those are the people I want to entrust my, my uh, career. Mm -hmm. And they were so impressive and so genuine in their recruiting of me that I actually signed with Michigan State without ever visiting the school. Mm -hmm. I took a visit, but it was after I'd signed. <laughs> Got you. Now, Big Ten at that time, very tough conference. Indiana's there, other tough schools. So when you first get there as a freshman, sophomore, what, how was college basketball? Did you feel like you belonged at first? Yeah, I felt that I belonged. Uh, the thing that really helped me make the transition from high school to college is that I had great teammates. Mm -hmm. And I had great support with the coaches. Mm -hmm. You know, they helped me to understand that I had to work very hard, but that they were gonna give me a chance. And they believed in my talent and my ability, and they really encouraged me each and every step of the way. Coached me hard, but still were very, very uh, uh, encouraging uh, when I made mistakes and things of that nature. But I had teammates who were not jealous that here's a freshman. Freshman had been eligible like two years. It's my third, in the third year of freshman eligibility. And here I am, a freshman starting. Now a lot of schools wouldn't, and a lot of players would not have liked that. They would have been resentful of that. But my teammates all embraced me. I was like the little brother. They wanted me to do well. so. That was very helpful in making that 
that, that transition from high school to college. All right, so now when you're a junior, I believe Magic becomes a freshman at Michigan State. Mm -hmm. So now what was it like at that time now? You had been there two years, you're a junior now. Now reverse, here comes this freshman, hot shot, very talented. What were your thoughts about Magic when you first saw him? Well, I wanted to play with him. He and I met when we were both still in high school. I was just two years ahead of him. But I wanted to win. And what Irvin brought, along with Jay Vincent, because they were both great players out of Lansing, Michigan, and they both came to Michigan State at the same time. What they brought was an opportunity to finally win, and to win big. And that's exactly what happened, as we almost got to the Final Four, Irvin's first year. And, but that set the table for us to get there the next year and win the championship. I enjoy playing with Irvin. He's one of the game's greatest players ever. And if you ever get a chance to play with a transcendent player like that, consider yourself very fortunate. You know, I'm so glad that his time uh, in college coincided with mine, and I was able to benefit from his presence. Now, that first year he was there, 77, 78 season, like you said, you all almost get to the Final Four. Lose to Kentucky in a close game. What do you remember just about, about that game? Disappointment. <laughs> Disappointment because we didn't do what we were had set out to do and we I'll always remember that game I'll always remember the score 52 49 it was our lowest output of the year and it was due to the fact that we didn't run we played Kentucky style which was kind of plodding and walking it up the floor and we were a running team but we uh, we learned from that because the next year when we got to the tournament we didn't walk we you know we ran and we scored 100 points twice we won our games by an average of 20 points there were no close games uh, but we learned that from the year prior. We played Kentucky style. Now, I'm not taking anything away from Kentucky. They were a great team. They were ranked number one all year, only lost two games. Uh, but that day in Dayton, Ohio, I felt like, you know, they were right to be had. Mm -hmm. And we didn't get them. Okay, now, do you remember just uh, what, I know it was disappointment, and I know you all, of course, wanted to win the next year. Do you remember just how you all prepared that off season, that summertime, just getting ready for your senior year? We had the benefit of going to uh, Brazil. Oh, to play, wow. to play in the uh, Brazilian Governors Cup champ uh, tournament, and we were there representing the United States. Mm -hmm. There was a team there from Brazil, a team from Uruguay, a team from Argentina, and we played this round robin. And uh, the Brazilian team was one of the best amateur teams in the country, in the world, rather. Uh, and we beat them. We beat them for the championship in over double overtime. But we came away from that experience feeling like okay. And then we played the Russians. We played the Russian national team in an exhibition game before our season began, and we beat them. We nice. blew them out. Nice. So here we are thinking, all right, this is the best amateur competition, grown men on these other teams in the world, and we're beating them. We should be able to handle our collegiate opponents. And it, was, it wasn't that quite that easy. You know, we had some struggles, but we ultimately played our best ball when we needed to. Okay, so now that next season, 78-79 season, now I know you all lost, I think, six games that year, and I know you all had a like a one-point loss to North Carolina. But you know, my question, one question is, which players do you remember in the Big Ten and in college basketball that time that really made an impact on you, who you really were like, wow, this is it? Well, every team in the Big Ten seemed to have one or two pros. Mm -hmm. You know, the Ohio State, team, Ohio State team was loaded. They had Kelvin Renz and Herb Williams, a former Nick who played about 18 years in the, in the yeah, league. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Michigan had Phil Hubbard and Mike McGee. Uh, Indiana had Mike Woodson, who coached here, mm -hmm. played here and coached here. Um, Ray Tolbert, um, Minnesota had Michael Thompson, who was a number one player taken in the draft in 1978. They had Ray Williams, who played here. Um, Kevin McHale. The Big Ten was loaded, man. You get out of there, you're really doing something. Right, okay, now. Joe Barry Carroll. Yeah, awesome. Amazing talent in college basketball. I feel like that time was when college basketball was really great. Now it's kind of watered down. But now, okay, so that season you all face Larry and Indiana State in the championship game. Indiana, they were undefeated at the time. Now, that ended up being the most watched championship game, most watched basketball game, period, in history of this country. Now, first, just going into that game, did you know that the game was that huge? No, I don't think we knew that. <laughs> we knew it was a big game. We knew that the nation would be watching. No doubt. But no what doubt. they really, really gravitated to was the fact that you had two very different teams. You had a, mm -hmm. a team sort of like a running gun uh, playground team. And you had a team that was sort of, you know, old school, if you will. Uh, styles were different. And then they had a, 
And I think the, uh, the racial aspect of it certainly was a big part too. Indiana State was a white team, Michigan State was primarily a black team. Uh, the, the, the two stars at the top, the ones that they headlined, were polar opposites. A lot of people wanted to see that and, you know, pick a side. Uh, it'll probably stay the number one game, watch game of all time because there were fewer choices then. So everybody, you got more choices now. Mm -hmm. So no matter how big the game, there are people doing other things and, you know, maybe they even watch it later or something. But I'm so glad to have been a part of that. Yeah. And I'm really thrilled to have won it. Right now, in that game, you had a big contribution. What do you remember most about that game? Uh, well, the game itself was not as easy as maybe the final score would indicate. It was our closest NCAA tournament game that year. We lost, we won by 11. Um, but I always felt like if I hadn't picked up a, my fourth foul when we were up 16, that we probably could have won that game by 20 or more points. We were, we were that good and we were playing that well. Uh, we had a great defense on Larry. Larry's a tremendous player. Indiana State was a very good team. But we felt like the Big Ten had prepared us for that moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by virtue of me getting that fourth mile and having to sit out seven or eight minutes, that game went from 16 back to six. And then when I went back in, we were able to take it back up to double figures. But I remember feeling relief afterwards because we, we pointed to this all year. We felt like we're the best team. Now we got to go out and prove it. And all the hurdles and the ups and downs and the near misses, um, we just, uh, it was more relief after it was over than jubilation. Jubilation came later. Nice. And how was it having to guard and play against Larry Bird? Uh, Larry, Larry, is, uh, Larry is one of the hardest players we ever had to guard. I mean, we had our whole defense skewed to try to stop him. We never defended anybody else or had to the way we went against Larry. But it worked. And thankfully, he was off a little bit. Uh, his teammates were off a little bit, and we were able to prevail. But, you know, I knew he was special when I played against him even then. Okay, I got about two more for you before you get ready for your game here. Now, you get drafted number four overall in the draft, Magic number one. You get drafted by your hometown, Detroit, Pistons, Michigan, and all that. So, how was that feeling, you know, after winning the championship, now you're picked so high in the draft by Detroit? Well, you know, my only disappointment is that I wasn't able to make Detroit a winner right away. You know, I, I felt good that I was a part of the transition and the changeover at Michigan State from just a regular team to a champion team. And I wanted to do the same thing for my hometown Pistons, but I got hurt, I got traded. Uh, I always say the game owes you nothing, though. So I'm thankful for what I got out of basketball. And here I am broadcasting for the Pistons, uh, you know, in my 37th year with the team. So it was really good that I got a chance to go to the Pistons because my career extended beyond just the playing, the playing court. That's awesome. Last one for you. Two-part question. So tonight the Knicks are honoring Willis Reed here, and he was the Knicks captain of the only championship team. Just, what do you remember about Willis Reed and your best, your most memorable to guard a moment? I was 12 years old when I watched the Knicks beat the Lakers in 1970. I watched Willis come out of the tunnel. It was an iconic moment to this day. And I know Willis, I met Willis. Willis is a very kind man, he was very nice to me. Uh, we talked often, and I was very saddened by his passing. But Willis was a great human being. He was a tremendous player, but a wonderful human being. And I, I felt honored to have been able to meet him and share space with him.